Australia has some of the most expensive house prices in the entire developed world. The number of people who don't own a home is increasing sharply, which means we have more and more renters, and many of those renters are being pushed to the brink because of lack of stock and rents being hiked crazily while wage increases remain low. So with housing affordability deteriorating to the worst levels in our nation's history, why isn't any action being taken to fix it? I'm Biko Constantinos, and that's what we're going to talk about today. My goal is to serve you with quality content, so why don't you give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It's totally free! And who doesn't love a freebie? Now why is Australia so against improving housing affordability? Number one, elections. Every government wants to get into power, and once they are in power, they want to remain in power. And one thing government parties know, Australians are absolutely obsessed with property. Don't believe me? The next time you go to a barbecue, count how many times someone mentions something to do with property. In my experience, it's a bloody lot. Now the reason Australians are so obsessed with property? Because property prices have outperformed wages for over 30 years. And not just outperformed, they've basically destroyed them. And not only that, you get super generous taxation deductions for owning property in Australia, which turbo boosts wealth creation. So which government is willing to put any sort of dampener on this crazy house price growth will have to be a brave one because approximately two-thirds of Australians own a property and guess what? They don't want their property prices to go down. And governments know this. In fact, Many believe that Labor lost the 2019 election due to their policies on negative gearing and capital gains tax discount. You don't mess with the Australian property cash cow. Or as others might call it, the Great Australian Ponzi. Where those who bought in the 1990s are top of the Ponzi and everyone below tries to participate in some of the gains. But those at the bottom, for example those who bought in the 2021 boom, could well get screwed. Second reason is the economy. Because the majority of Australians wealth is tied up into property, property prices are one of the biggest factors that influence the economy. When property prices go up, property owners feel more wealthy. And when people feel wealthier, they tend to spend more. And that spending goes into the economy, increases the profits for businesses, which makes people happy and politicians love it. And the government is very well aware of the opposite scenario. For example, if house prices fall significantly, property owners feel less wealthy, will spend less because of that, and then businesses will suffer, profits go down, people get fired, which increases unemployment, so overall the economy suffers. And no government wants to be in charge of a plunging economy. So that's another real reason why the government is unwilling to take any real action to improve housing affordability. But with more and more people not being able to afford a home, the government has to look like they care. So what do they do? They consistently come out with sweetener type schemes to help first home buyers into the market. We've seen a host of different schemes that might help a little bit, but all they end up doing is putting more demand into the housing market, which ends up lifting house prices even higher. So instead of dealing with the root issue, governments like to pretend that they care, but really they're making housing affordability even worse. But this is their way to try and make the most people happy. So property owners stay happy because house prices keep going up. First home buyers are somewhat a little bit happy because they get some assistance. But I think people are starting to see through these schemes. What's the point of a small amount of assistance for a first home buyer when house prices are up here and their wages are down here? Eventually the numbers don't stack up. It's like dressing up a pile of bones. You try and make everything look like it's okay, but underneath, everything's dead. And underneath these pretty schemes, our housing market is broken. And it's only getting worse. Thirdly, it's 
hard. We've got a nation of rising population due to generous immigration growth, but we don't have enough affordable housing. If the government doesn't ensure there's enough affordable housing, then many people on low incomes will end up just not being able to afford a place to live. And that's the situation with the current rental crisis. As rents are jacked up massively, the most vulnerable in our society are being kicked to the curb. But creating enough affordable housing is no easy feat. It requires a lot of government investment, collaboration with the state governments, a lot of strategic planning, and overall governance. But the government just seems to want to hand it over to the private sector, hoping there'll be enough housing to satisfy our population growth and keep rents low enough. But as we've seen, that hasn't occurred. So it's going to take real effort to make sure there's enough housing so that every Australian has a place to live. And lastly, personal gain. 144 federal members of parliament own more than one property. In fact, 84 federal MPs own three or more properties. So these MPs are at the age where they probably purchase properties when they are only about three times the average income. So they bought at a time where housing was at its most affordable. In other words, at the top of the Ponzi scheme. And because they've been able to enjoy house price gains way faster than wages, they've been able to accrue multiple properties because owning property when house prices soar makes it far easier to keep buying more and more property. So MPs with multiple properties definitely don't want to see their asset values fall and they know if they take real action that's what will happen. So why would they put in place policies that could end up reducing their wealth? Something to think about. Alright, so we've seen why they won't fix housing affordability, but what's the solution? Both for property owners and non-property owners. Well, because we've allowed house prices to rise so much faster than wages, we need a period of time where wages rise faster than house prices, and that will improve housing affordability. If we're able to do that, we can keep a strong housing market and a strong economy. But if we allow crazy spending speculation to continue unabated, the housing market will eventually collapse, which is no good for anyone, which means the economy collapses and everything goes to crap. Don't give me problems, Bicko. Give me solutions. Here's my proposal. First, ban foreign ownership of housing. Why allow a small percentage of very wealthy foreigners put upwards pressure on house prices when locals can't afford a house of their own? It's fine to have foreign ownership when housing affordability is great, but when it's shocking, look after your locals first. Second, overhaul overgenerous housing policies. Scrap negative gearing, reduce the capital gains tax discount, and remove remove the no capital gains tax on principal places of residence if the capital gain is outrageously high. For example, if you make a capital gain of 2 million or more on your principal place of residence or any such exorbitant figure, you have to pay some capital gains tax. Now if we made those changes, the government would save billions of dollars that they'd be able to use to build more affordable housing. So all we're doing is removing over generous housing deductions and using those savings to ensure that that we've got enough housing for all Australians including the most vulnerable and without some of those ridiculously generous policies the overall demand for housing will start to reduce. Now the good thing for property owners house prices aren't just going to crash they just won't rise as ridiculously fast as they have been because overall demand is not as strong and for me that's the best position for all Australians including property owners and non-property owners because if housing becomes more affordable, you'll have more renters being able to afford their own home. And other people who are happy to continue renting should not see the crazy rental increases because overall house prices are more affordable, which means rents don't have to increase as dramatically for investors to maintain a decent rate of return. But does any Australian government actually have the kahunas to take real action to improve housing affordability? I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>